yogis. I'm Lara. This is going to be our last of the yoga boards talking about the kleshas. We made it to the fifth klesha. And the fifth klesha is one of the most difficult. So the fifth klesha is called Abhinivesha. And Abhinivesha means clinging to life. Um, and you can probably already tell why this is such a hard one. It seems like it's just um, our innate need to hold on to the fact that we are alive. And the fear of death and the resistance to death is something that we all seem to have within us. And it's a very natural thing, but um, it is, like all the other klesha, something that will eventually cause us suffering in our life. And when you study this klesha, when you study Abhinivesha, you will see that this is one of the most difficult levels of the kleshas to actually work through, to decrease this as an obstacle. And it's said that even the most advanced yogis and the sages and the gurus who have been studying for years and years and years and have attained this very high level in their personal practice will still struggle with Abhinivesha. And for most of us, all of the kleshas are kind of a stumbling block and a place where we're going to struggle. So as we go through each of the boards and we go through all of the practices to work on these kleshas, the important message to take from this is building awareness. Just being aware that this is somewhere that suffering is going to rise up in our life and knowing the things to look out for. Because when we have that level of awareness, we can identify it, we can put a label on it so that we know what's actually happening when we see this rise up and our awareness is there. Are we going to tackle it today or tomorrow or next week or next year? No, probably not. Um, probably not even in this lifetime. It may take us quite a few <laughs> to work through this process. And in yoga, or um, in the grand scope of things, in spiritual practice, they say that until we conquer Abhinivesha, if you follow the reincarnation path, you will continue to reincarnate over and over and over until you eventually have this release of the attachment to living or the clinging to life. And that's the point where your spirit is no longer going to have to be reincarnated in order to learn the lessons that are put forth in that lifetime. So for most people, death is not something that we like to think about or we like to talk about on a regular basis. But there's so much to be learned from it that in the practice, we try to just remind ourselves on a regular basis that that is a part of life and the fact that we're all going to get to that point where we have to face death is something that we want to prepare ourselves for and something that we want to keep in our mind and we want to sort of build a relationship with it so that when we do get to that point hopefully we can have a level of peace and a level of acceptance that we know what's going to happen it's really what we would want for everyone that we know, everyone that we care about, and really everyone on a bigger scope as well, that when we get to that point that we're at the end of our life, that we would have some peace and some ease as we make that transition. So studying Abhinivesha is about coming to that point of being able to have peace at that space in our life. So it's a very important, but also very difficult thing to think about, to talk about, to work into your practice. This is some heavy stuff. When we're practicing yoga and we get to the end of the practice, we go down for Shavasana. We go into our final relaxation. And when we're in that final relaxation, usually we're in what's called um, corpse pose. So you're already probably thinking, okay, <laughs> we don't usually call it corpse pose in class because it does sound rather morbid. But the training that we do in yoga, um, the difficult postures that we put ourselves in, the challenges that we face during our practice, we always talk about that as a way to practice the challenges that we, we encounter in the rest of our life, right? So the practice of corpse pose is right along those same lines. We know that eventually we're going to get to that point where our life ends, and we want that to be a process of peace, of being able to let go, 
Um, so it's something that we have to practice as well. It's a process of letting go of everything layer by layer. And during our practice, we work out our physical tension. We deepen our breath so that we don't have as much restriction. Our breath is able to come and go with ease. We work through the layers of the mind to calm the thought process down and to gain greater focus and clarity mentally. We release emotions that have become stagnant or stuck in our body. We let them just come and go as they need to. Um, so we're working on all the different layers to create clarity and to create ease. And the very last part of our yoga practice is corpse pose. So you can see that as representative of the lifespan. There's this warming up process, there's the peak most active part of our practice, or the peak most active part of our life. There's a ramping down where we start to um, kind of rein things in. And then there's the final part of our practice where we go into complete stillness and we let go of everything. We let go of the physical world around us and we move into this space of just being. Um, and it's a, a place of when you're in Shavasana, we are connected to the true self, to the soul. And there might be things going on in the room around you that you might not even be aware of. You lose connection to the sounds and the input from the senses because you're so strongly inwardly connected. But you've let go of the thought processes, hopefully, if it's a good Shavasana. Um, you don't have a lot of busyness in your mind. You don't feel your body as much as you would during the rest of your practice. There's almost a little bit of a disconnection of letting go of that sensory input. So that's the experience of Shavasana, but it is corpse pose. It is this process of almost practicing for the inevitable, that we know that eventually we're going to have to face death and we want to train ourselves that we can let go with grace. So there's a few different mantras that I like to use in connection with this practice. Let go is a really good mantra to use. You can tie that so strongly with the breath, especially when we're doing restorative practices because you have to go layer by layer by layer. Every time you feel like you've completely let go, you find that extra layer that you can let go a little bit more. So when you use the breath and as you're inhaling in your mind, you say the word let, and as you're exhaling, you say the word go. So it's inhale, let, exhale, go. So every time you breathe out, you go down another layer of tension, holding, resistance, until there's just complete softness and ease. It's a great mantra to use. The other mantra that I like to use is the Sata Nama, which helps us with understanding the natural flow of life and trying not to resist that. Each of those different parts represents a different part of the life cycle. Sa is birth, Ta is life, Na is death, and then Ma is rebirth or whatever you personally know to be after death. And I put this arrow right to the end here after the ta, because we have birth and then there's life, right? And we said it's kind of like this um, bell curve or this wave where it starts out slower and then we build momentum and then we ramp it down until the end of life. And we have that transition between life and death. And that's where the resistance of Abhinivesha comes in. It's that clinging that you don't want to let go of the body. Um, a lot of it comes from fear that we might not know what's coming afterwards and that makes us want to cling to what we do know. It's scary going into the unknown. But it's the process that everybody and every living thing has to go through. So this mantra is meant to help us to understand that flow and to be able to, fl to follow it um, fluidly without resistance. So that's the mantra that we will practice right before we go into Shavasana when we do our practice for Abhinivesha. And you can use the mudra that goes along with this. So it's sa, ta, na, ma. And what we did in class is I played the song, a very soft version of this mantra as we went into Shavasana. And my students started out just tapping 
their fingers along with the mantra. And then I made it quieter and quieter. The movements become softer and softer until the hands release and everything else releases and you move into that full version of your deep relaxation. But it's a really beautiful mantra when you feel like you notice resistance, when things are changing and you are holding and resisting that change. This is a very good mantra to practice to help to release that resistance, release attachment, and just let yourself go with what's naturally going to happen. We saw the theme in some of the other kleshas that we try to control. We try to hold and steer where we want our life to go. And a lot of what we learn from the kleshas is being able to let go, being able to follow whatever pattern is going to unfold, right? So we're allowing life to be what it needs to be rather than trying to make it what we want it to be because that is where the suffering comes from when it's one way and we think it should be another way and there's a conflict that causes our suffering so use that mantra anytime you feel that process starting to happen one of the images that i really like as a way to hold on to this concept of abinivation and what it is is thinking about the ocean and thinking about waves so in um, avidya in the first klesha it is understanding yourself to be a part of the whole to be completely connected and um, one with everything around you so you lose that ignorance of not understanding what your true self is, what your soul is, and how interconnected everything is. So it starts out as the, the whole ocean. And then as you go over toward the shoreline, you start to get this differentiation of individual waves. And you can think of that like an identity or a person. The wave starts to rise up and separate from the rest of the ocean. And it almost has its own identity. That's where we could see the formation of the ego that if that wave had a name, <laughs> it would be that, um, I don't know, Bill, <laughs> Bill the wave. Um, and that wave would understand itself to be Bill and it would rise up and reach the peak of that wave crest. It would crash onto the ocean and then start to distribute and be reabsorbed into the rest of the ocean. At that point of washing back down the shore and being reabsorbed, that is where this clinging to life or the clinging to the individual identity would come in. The ego says, no, I'm Bill, I'm this wave, I don't want to get reabsorbed back into the ocean, I don't know what that experience is going to be like. So that's the fear or the clinging to that individual expression of life. And eventually everything has to go back into that hole, that source that it comes from and it's a process of training ourselves not to resist that process. So that is Abhini Vesha. For the practice that I designed, it is a restorative practice. Um, so it's quite gentle and we use a lot of props. We're going to do some work at the wall and a lot of focus on releasing holding in different areas of our breath so that our breath can be really full. A big part of Abhini Vesha is coming to terms with the fact that this experience that we have is a very limited experience and eventually it's going to end. When we understand that and we accept that, it will change the way that you experience your life on a daily basis. It's going to change the decisions that you make. It's going to change where you spend your time, who you spend it with, what you're doing during that time. When we forget that life goes really quickly and eventually it's going to end and we're going to have to give up all of these experiences, we tend to do things that we wouldn't necessarily want to do. We force ourselves to do things because we think we have to. Um, but when we come to terms with how limited this experience is, it definitely changes the way that you're going to live your life and what you're going to do with the energy and the time and the resources that you have during this life. It's also going to change your relationship to gratitude. Even when things get difficult, we can always turn ourselves back to that concept of gratitude. What do I have to be grateful for right now? And at the very basic level of gratitude, there's always that, well, I'm still alive, I'm still breathing aspect of gratitude. But 
anytime that you feel like you can pull this into your meditation or your practice, especially when you're going into Shavasana, let your mind settle on that aspect for a moment or so, that it's preparation for the complete letting go of attachment. And it's the most difficult form of letting go of attachment, but that's why we have to practice it. When we practice it, we build a relationship with it, it takes away some of that fear and some of that power that it holds over us. So let that be something that you pull into your yoga practice and you think about when you're doing your breath work and you're doing your restorative poses to see how easy it is for you to let go or see if there's resistance to the process of letting go. And I will see you during our practice for our final klesha, Abhinivesha. Thank you. Namaste.